The other problem is, and I've realized it, that if it had passed out of calendars, and this is where tough decisions have to be made, not what is politically expedient, but what is right. I was elected to do what is right, not what is politically expedient. I knew that I could get beat up over this. But I would rather come home and tell you why I did something right than have to go to bed at night and sleep on why I did something that I considered less than right. You wouldn't have known it had I just passed it out of calendars. But I would have known it. Had I let this out of calendars, wherever it landed on that calendar list, all of the other bills below it would have died. There were good bills on there we needed to pass. There were good pro-life bills on there we needed to pass. And they would have died for a bill that publicly people thought was a really good deal. I thought it was a good deal too to start with. But a bill that ultimately would have taken us to court, given us a black eye, and we would have lost. It is better to wait until next session and pass something that can be good black letter of the law and something that can hold up in court and something we're not going to get a black eye over. And so that is the decision. And so you will understand if somebody says, well, Debbie Debbie Reynolds in favor of Sharia law. Now, how many of you would believe that? That's right. I mean, for crying out loud. But when, when I am in the legislature and when I am making those decisions, my rule is the same rule that I had when I rode the ambulance with Cypress Creek EMS for eight years. Remember that? We, we rode together. She and I rode together. And the first rule in medicine, whether you're a doctor or an EMT or a paramedic, the first rule of medicine is do no harm. My first rule in the legislature is do no harm. So I had a bill that I thought was a pretty good bill to start with. And then I was faced with the decision, am I going to do something politically expedient? Or am I going to allow something out of calendars that can ultimately do harm? Potentially kill bills on the floor because everything underneath it will die because it will take up all the time in debate. It will suck all the oxygen out of the air. So I had a choice. Do you know harm? or go home and let everybody be happy. And I had to make that, that tough choice. But that's what, you, that's what you hired me to do. And so that's what I went to Austin and did. Uh, there are a number of other bills that we passed, including the campus carry. Uh, the effective date of the campus carry, there are different effective dates of that. That's a little bit more complex because the different colleges are determining what they are going to do. Lone Star College here in our community is going to look at the other colleges to determine their start date. And so that's a little bit more complex. But I've got to tell you, I supported Alan Fletcher in that campus, Gary. I was a little hesitant at first. But after, the more I looked at it, the more convinced I became that it was a good deal. Because you still have to be 21 you still have to have your concealed CHL, your concealed and carry license. And most of the young people, or older people, that are going to our universities and colleges that have their CHL, well, do you think they really take them out of their purse and leave them in their car before they go to class? I would. And so we already have those there. And it's our Second Amendment right. It's our Second Amendment right. It's not like we're going to go passing out guns as the kids are on their way to animal house. So, and the crime statistic for those people that have their CHL 
is almost zero. I mean, it's less than 0.5, I mean, it's less than 1%. As a matter of fact, at the capital, Fred, and I think uh, you've done this, if I remember correctly, when you go to the capital, you have, it's like going to the airport. You have to go through the the thing with the metal detector and, and our DPS is there and you have to let them look through your purse and all that kind of thing. Because the security of the capital is very, very tight. However, you do not have to go through all that if you have your CHL. All you have to do is pull out your CHL and show it to them and they're like, good deal, go on through. DPS considers it like the cavalry has arrived. And so our CHL holders are good, responsible, law-abiding citizens. And they deserve to be treated as the law-abiding citizens that they are. And so with that, I, 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 I'm going to go ahead and wrap up. There's a lot more that we did. There's a lot more that I could say. But Fred, I want to personally thank you for what you do in our community. Uh, we keep close communication. He tells me I'm doing a good, good job sometimes. Sometimes he fusses at me. <laughs> and sometimes I fuss back at him. But we're like a family up here in our area. And, and I've got to tell you, it is so good to be back home. I'm so thankful for my husband who has so much patience with me. And, uh, uh, and, and doing what all is necessary to be able to go to Austin and to represent you. Let me tell you tonight, I have announced I am running for re-election. I do want to continue representing you. It's a real blessing, and each one of you are, are a blessing to us and a blessing to this community. So thank you very much for allowing me to do that. And may God bless you greatly. And may God bless Texas. Thank you. Thank you, Debbie. Um,